Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pua, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2020 A-Levels H2 Chemistry Paper 1, question 14. Now, question 14 goes something like this. The equation of a reaction is shown. So we have P plus Q to give me R and 2S. This is a reversible reaction. Substances P, Q, R, S are either all in solution or are all gases. The equilibrium concentrations of P, Q, R, and S are measured in three experiments. The experiments have different starting concentration and they are performed under different conditions. And the results are shown in the table. We have this information here involving different pressure, different temperature, and different concentrations of P, Q, R, S at equilibrium. Alright, so the question is asking which conclusion can be drawn from these results. A, the reactants are all gases. B, the reactants are all in solution. C, the forward reaction is endothermic. D, the forward reaction is exothermic. So the topic tested in this question clearly is under chemical equilibria. Because we know that this is a reversible reaction, we have the concentration of all these species at equilibrium. Uh, and if I consider experiments 1, 2, and 3, there is a change in the temperature. So let us see how do we handle uh, this particular exercise. Now, we have the equation, correct? P plus Q to give me R plus 2S. And we can easily write out the Kc expression, the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration, since the concentration of my species P, Q, R, S are all given at equilibrium. So my equilibrium constant K uh, in terms of concentration, would just be the concentration of the product raised to the power of the coefficient divided by the concentration of my reactant raised to the power of my coefficient. So this would be concentration of R, power 1, concentration of S squared, power 2, divided by concentration of P, and concentration of Q. Now what we can do is based on the information given in the question, experiment 1 and 2 and 3, I can actually calculate the Kc for each of these experiments. We can easily do that, substitute all these values into the expression, and I can press calculator, I can get each of these values. So I just give you the outcome here. I don't think that it is that much of an issue for us to calculate the Kc expression. So the Kc for experiment one, we can calculate this to be 0 0.0375. The Kc for experiment two is 0 0.0510. We notice that this is a different value. At the beginning, we would think that wouldn't equilibrium constant be a constant term? Yes, it is a constant. When I change pressure, change concentration, add a catalyst, Kc, it is a constant. Kc or Kp expression, my equilibrium constant usually only changes when there's a change in temperature. So by right, when we do this calculation, we might be a bit surprised. Why is there a difference in the K value? But if I look back at the information given, clearly the temperature is different, right? At 300K, the Kc has a certain value, but at 400K, the Kc, it is a different value. It is within expectation. We do expect this to happen because temperature changes, the K would be affected. Now, if I consider experiment 3, I can calculate the Kc expression to be 0 0.0375. And you notice this value, the Kc value that we have calculated for experiment 3 and experiment 1 is exactly the same. No surprises here because the temperature is the same, correct? So experiment one, I have 300 Kelvin. Experiment three, it is also 300 Kelvin. You notice the Kc value, it is 0 0.0375. The same for both experiments one and experiment three. So when temperature is constant, Kc is constant, within expectation, within what we know. And when there's a difference in temperature, when the temperature is 400K, higher temperature, my Kc changes, in this case, the Kc is larger. Now what we can do is we can make use of this. The temperature increase, Kc increase, we can use this to deduce the enthalpy change of the reaction. So if I come back to these options A, B, C, D, most likely we can deduce either option C is true or option D is true. Forward reaction is endo or forward reaction is exothermic. One of these must be the answer. So let us run through the concept to deduce the enthalpy change of the process given that my Kc is larger when there's an increase in temperature. Now, when I consider how Kc is affected when temperature increases, what we do is we don't use this expression to try to uh, deduce the shift in 
the position of equilibrium because it is very mathematical. It's a bit cumbersome for us to use this actual term. What we do is we can use a simpler expression. We just say that, okay, if I consider my equilibrium constant K, it is just very loosely a ratio of product to reactant. Correct? Concentration of the product divided by the concentration of the reactant. Now, what does it mean when the temperature increase, the Kc increases? If I have a bigger K value, if my K increases, it must mean that I have a bigger numerator, smaller denominator. Correct? So I'll have more products. Because product it is a numerator, I'll have less reactant because reactant it is the denominator. So when my K increases, it must imply that I'm forming more products and I'm forming less reactant. When temperature increase, so if I'm forming more products and less reactant, it would mean that when the temperature increase, the position of the equilibrium actually shifts towards the right hand side. My POE uh, is actually shifting towards the right hand side. It favors the forward reaction. So if I try to link these two ideas together, I know that when temperature increases, the position of the equilibrium shifts towards the right-hand side. So this is one idea. The next thing is, when temperature increase, according to Le Chatelier's principle, what would the system favor? Does it favor exothermic process or endothermic process? We know that when temperature increase, the system will favor endothermic process because the system doesn't like this increase in the temperature. It doesn't like this excess heat. So what you try to do is it will favor the endothermic process to absorb this excess heat. So temperature increase, it should favor endothermic process in order for me to absorb the excess heat. And we have also deduced that since the Kc increases when temperature increase, the four reaction is favored. We can tie these two ideas together. We know that the four reaction must be endothermic because when the temperature increase, if the four reaction, maybe let me put in the delta H term here. If the enthalpy change, it is an endothermic term. Four reaction is endo. When temperature increase, the system favors the endothermic process to absorb excess heat. So four reaction is endo. Position of the equilibrium will shift towards the right-hand side. Form more reactants, form less product. So we will have a bigger numerator, smaller denominator. The K value will increase, which is, again, uh, within what we have predicted here. So the conclusion that we have is we know that the four reaction is endothermic. And of course, if I run through the options A, B, C, D, C would have to be the best answer. Now, in this case, we wouldn't be able to determine whether the reactants are all gases or all solutions because we don't have enough information. But it shouldn't give us that much of a problem. It shouldn't be ambiguous because if I, again, consider options A, B, C, and D, C is something that we can determine explicitly. We are able to deduce that. So our C will have to be my best answer for this particular question. All right, so that was the discussion for question 14. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.